Okay, welcome everyone to the Veterans Advisory Commission meeting on November 16th. I hope everyone has had uh, a good Veterans Day holiday and we have an eventful uh, commission meeting planned. So we'll we'll get right into it uh, with a few administrative items up front. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, any commissioners want to volunteer for uh, for the pledge? I can do it, Chair. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Leo. All right, please, if you could stand in your perspective area. Also, veterans are welcome to salute. And here we go. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United of, America. States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, uh -huh. indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate it. And we'll get to the next agenda item. OK, uh, Stephanie, can you please call the roll? Julio. Present. Patricia Jackson Kelly. She'll be running late. OK. Joanna uh, McFadden. Anthony Allman. Present. G. Zato. Present. John Gutierrez. Present. Dennis Anderson. Present. Once more, um, Commissioner Jackson Kelly. Commissioner Joanna McFadden. Chair, there is no quorum. Currently. Um, if uh, Commissioner Jackson Kelly joins, do we have a quorum at that point? Yes, sir. I'll note it when she comes in. Okay. So we'll note for the time being that we do not have a quorum, but with one more commissioner, we, we should have a quorum. Okay, uh, good to know. Uh, we'll get to the next agenda item. Uh, at this point, because we don't have a quorum, I'm not sure if we can move on the approval of the minutes. I think, uh, Commissioner, no, no, you have your hand raised? I do. I just wanted to uh, uh, reflect that I was able to sign back on again, and so I, I am here, I think, as a citizen. Yeah, correct. Thank you for the time being. Hopefully by next meeting, you'll be fully uh, seated and able to participate. Okay, I think we have somebody with a with a mic on. Last four, two, five, four, seven. If your phone number is two, five, four, seven. Can you go on mute, please? Thank you. OK, so. Um, at this point in time, I don't think we could take action on approval of the minutes, Stephanie, unless. We have uh, a quorum, is that right? So we'll have to come back to this if, if possible. Yes, sir, that is correct. OK. Uh, for the time being, we'll move to the next agenda item. OK, just a, a brief report um, for today's notice of meeting uh, went out on November 10th at 1137 AM. Um, if for whatever reason you have not received that, the email would have come from mva at subscriptions.lacounty.gov. Um, check your spam filter. Um, currently, there is no way to subscribe to the mailing list from our website uh, unless you may notice a pop-up 
Um, there's a pop-up on the bottom right to stay connected. If for whatever reason you click no thanks, that pop-up disappears. It does not come back. Although we're working um, to update the website so that there's either um, a pop-up and a static icon or just a static icon so people can subscribe um, if they change their mind down the road. Uh, in the interim, if you did click no thanks, just email info at mva.lacounty.gov and we'll be sure to get either you or people who might be interested um, on the mailing list. Um, in the meantime, I also like to report out on our YouTube channel because that's where an archive of our meetings are posted. Um, you can uh, go on YouTube, type in LA County Military and Veteran Affairs. We currently have 46 subscribers, which was two more than, than last month. Um, I personally attended the Vet Day LA event at Bob Pope Patriotic Hall. I just wanted to say thanks to Supervisor Holly Mitchell for attending. And you know, I learned that she is part of the military veteran community. Her dad um, is an Air Force veteran, which was, you know, because I don't live in the district, I, I didn't have a lot of background on Supervisor Mitchell, but it's good to know that she's a member of the community. Um, I also wanted to put in a brief plug to um, send in any potential venues for the PACT Act informa information sessions. Director Zinner sent the commissioners a letter on November 1st. I think if we can get these in by the end of the year, that would be ideal so that we could start planning for events um, early in the new year. And then the final point I'd make is, yeah, last meeting we ratified new bylaws um, and part of the bylaws allows the chairperson to appoint a vice chair if there's a vacancy. Um, currently in Supervisorial District 3, uh, former Commissioner Campbell uh, is no longer with us, so I've uh, asked Commissioner Anderson to step in as vice uh, for the time being. And uh, I see Commissioner Jackson Kelly's on. Commissioner Jackson Kelly, can you hear us? Commissioner Jackson Kelly. I think you just went on, on mute. Does your audio work? Stephanie, is there a way to uh, maybe email Commissioner Jackson Kelly to call in so we could at least get a confirmation that she's here for the for the quorum? Okay. Well, for the time being, I think we can move on to the next agenda item, uh, which I believe should be public comment. And then hopefully at that point, at the end of public comment, we could check back to make sure that we have um, that we have quorum. Okay. Um, so you may have noticed a change to the notice of meeting. Um, there is a new public comment registration form. Hopefully this simplifies things for members of the public. Um, speaker number one is Paul Mont Montavlo. Mont I'm sorry, my pronunciation is terrible. Montalvo, are you here? Paul Montalvo. Are you here? Okay. Speaker number two, Eliana Hernandez, are you here? Eliana Hernandez? Okay. Speaker number three, Tony Cruz, are you here? Tony Cruz. 
Speaker number three. Okay. Speaker number four, Dan Hall, are you here? Hey, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, I am. Okay, great. When you're ready, um, you can begin and you'll have three minutes. Great, thank you. Uh, members of the commission, guests, staff, my name is Dan Hall. I live in Santa Monica in the third district and I'm a US Army veteran. I served from 2010 to 2018, uh, deploying to Iraq and Kuwait in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. I'm speaking to you today in support of item number 10, uh, recommendation number one to the Board of Supervisors. It aligns our county with our national and state policies for access to recreational parks and facilities, which we know are so critical for the mental health of our veteran community. Just as important though, this initiative would give veterans the incentive to register with the county, which will provide the self-identification data necessary for this commission, our county, our county staff, our MVA department to uh, provide data-driven recommendations to our board of supervisors and to the rest of the county staff. Um, so I hope you'll support this recommendation today. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, appreciate it. We'll go, um, I think we lost sight of the public comment roster. We can go back, great. Um, speaker number five, Genevieve. Are you here? Speaker number five, Genevieve Cleverell from SD5, are you here? Okay. Speaker number six, are you here, Stephen Machuga? Sir, I'm here. Okay, great. When, uh, whenever you're ready, um, your three minutes will begin. All right, thank you, sir. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you for the invite today. My name is Stephen Machuga. I'm an Army veteran of eight years, uh, four years in infantry, four years intel. And uh, I'm out here in Los Angeles as well. And I'd like to offer my support for the recommendation being considered during item 10 today. Uh, personally, I think it's a great idea. It's, I've had that veteran uh, information stabbed on my ID for years at this point, and it's done nothing for me. I like the idea of it actually being able to do something for me. And uh, that, that goes for most veterans. I think uh, <clears throat> Dan's comment earlier about uh, veterans self-identifying, uh, having that veteran stamped on your, your ID card would go a long way in helping identify veterans uh, in the county. So that is, uh, that's everything I've got for this. Uh, thank you for your time. Great, thank you, uh, Steve Machuga, appreciate it. Speaker number seven, Dan Ortiz, are you here? Yes, I am. You got okay. me? Whenever you're ready, your time will start. All right, good afternoon, commissioners and staff. Uh, I see some faces I've known for a while and some new ones as well. My name is Dan Ortiz. I'm a former commissioner for District 1 back in the late 90s. I'm a Desert Storm veteran of the Army. I've worn many caps throughout my years, but I'm here to speak only as a veteran. I'm glad to see Patriotic Hall open to the public again. This building was built for veterans and shall always remain so. Thank you, Director Zanner. I look forward to watching the department grow and succeed. I'm here to speak on item number 10 on the agenda. Our national government has an access pass for national parks. Our state has a pass as well for our state parks. Why doesn't our county offer the same? This would be a great way to bring attention to our parks by showing their support for veterans and their families to welcome us. I've been a part of and watched this commission for many years. I was shocked to learn that we had no bylaws. Thank you commissioners for your hard work and dedication to rectifying that oversight. Your recommendation on item 10 is a great way to start off officially with bylaws in order. Parks and Rec will say it's lost revenue. I say it's a step in bringing people back to our parks. I'd love to walk my dog around Santa Fe Dam, but parking costs add up. Let me point out that I come from the east side where we don't have many dog parks available, but that's another story for another time. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Ortiz. 
Uh, is speaker number eight, Kevin Varga here? Good afternoon, I'm here. Okay, uh, when you are ready, you can begin. Uh, so good afternoon uh, to everyone. Uh, basically to touch on what everyone else has touched on already. Uh, so my name is Kevin Varga. I recently separated from the Marine Corps uh, and uh, received services at the Bob Hope Patriotic Hall. Um, currently, I am a student at University of Southern California, really right down the street from the Bob Hope Patriotic Hall and uh, an active member of the Student Veterans Association on campus. Uh, while I am new to the Los Angeles veterans community, I would like to offer my support for the recommendation offered during item 10 on today's agenda. Um, I think it would be great if veterans could access county public plans free of charge. Uh, thanks for your time. Okay, great. Thank you, Kevin Varga. Appreciate it. Speaker number nine, Tom Lasser. Tom, you're here. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, Chairman. And my name is Tom Lasser, retired soldier, uh, Vietnam veteran, after Army helicopter pilot by trade. I am a commissioner of the old second district, and uh, I live in the new set, uh, uh, Second District of Redondo Beach. Uh, I too offer my support for the recommendation being considered uh, during item 10. And in my time as a commissioner, uh, I don't think we uh, were able to put anything together like this. And uh, I think the Veterans uh, Advisory Commission uh, should be encouraged to continue to do this, uh, especially the, uh, having the board adopt an ordinance bringing the county of Los Angeles closer to the existing federal and local government programs regarding free access to public land. And as a quick side note, uh, uh, Holly Mitchell was a speaker at Veterans Day in uh, Redondo Beach, and afterwards uh, uh, had a short conversation with her, and this subject came up from one of her staff. So uh, it, 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 this subject is circulating, so obviously the commission is doing uh, a good job. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Tom Lasser, I appreciate it. And uh, that's that's all we had for public comment today. Again, just as a reminder to folks, the bylaws uh, that were adopted in October asked that members of the public register 24 hours in advance, and that is done so um, so that we can make sufficient time on the agenda to hear everyone's comment. So if you haven't um, uh, received the notice of meeting, um, make sure to get on the email list, email info at mva.lacounty.gov, and uh, we'll be sure to, to get you on the department's email list. Uh, and then you, you'll receive generally about 72 hours in advance the notice of meeting with instructions on how to register for public comment. Um, Commissioner Jackson Kelly, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, if we can go back to the roll call, please. We just make sure we have a quorum. Okay. Stephanie, would you mind calling the roll again one more time? Yeah. Present. Appreciate Justin Kelly. Yeah. Anthony Allman. Present. Sato. Present. John Gutierrez. Present. Dennis Anderson. Present. Here you have a form. Okay, just to double check, is Commissioner McFadden here? Okay. Um, so we do have a quorum. Uh, if we can maybe quickly um, review the minutes and wait for, uh, I'll wait for a motion. Commissioners, uh, we'll need a, a motion and second to adopt the minutes for last meeting. Uh, <clears throat> Commissioner Allman, uh, move to approve the minutes. Okay, Commissioner Anderson. Do we have Commissioner a second? Gutierrez, make a second. Commissioner Gutierrez, okay, SD5 is on it. Appreciate that. And we'll do a roll call vote to adopt the minutes. 
Approve. Commissioner Leo. Approve. Commissioner Jackson Kelly. Approve. Approve. Thank you. Commissioner Zato. Approved. Commissioner Gutierrez. Approved. Commissioner Anderson. Approved. All six yes vote. Great, thank you so much. All right, we had the minutes approved. We can move on to the, the next agenda item. We've done the chairman report, public comments. Thank you members of the public. We'll get to our first guest speaker today, um, Andrew Strain. Uh, Andrew, before you start, I'd like to invite maybe Commissioner Leal um, to maybe you know, say a few words, give us a preview of why this uh, presentation is was asked for. Commissioner Leal, would you like to uh, say anything? Yes, of course. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate this being part of you know, the presentation today for the commission. I know there's a lot of activity going on, a lot of great things going on out there, a lot of feedings, a lot of expansion. We had heard that there was obviously, now it's a while back, but there was a fire. And, uh, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that everybody was okay. But just to kind of get an overall update on the tiny homes, its expansion, how long do they foresee that's gonna be there and basically how it's doing. So uh, thank you, Chairman, and I do appreciate the update. So I'm going to be all ears. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Andrew, whenever you're uh, ready, I'm not sure. Do you have slides today? Do you want to request uh, control? Yeah, that'd be great if I could share my screen. Okay, we see it. Perfect. Yeah, uh, thank you um, to the Chairman and to all the Commissioners for uh, inviting us to speak here. Um, apologize with some of the scheduling. Uh, we are in the midst of our stand down uh, today, so that's uh, not related specifically to this presentation, but um, a great event that we try and put on uh, on a yearly basis to uh, connect veterans with housing services, donations, and employment services, and all sorts of stuff. So um, it's been super successful so far, and I recognize some folks on the line here who have been involved with uh, planning that event. So thanks to everyone who's uh, provided support there. Um, did want to focus this update on uh, specifically our uh, CTRS uh, program or the care treatment and rehabilitative services program, um, but I'm also open if it would be helpful to come back and do other briefs to this commission um, on implementation of permanent supportive housing at the West LA VA and um, some of the other planning and homeless programs efforts uh, that we're working through here. Um, so. Regarding the CTRS fire, um, this occurred um, in kind of the early morning hours of Friday, September 9th um, at the CTRS site. CTRS, for those who aren't familiar, is a um, low barrier pilot program uh, that we started on the West LA VA during COVID as an emergency shelter initiative. Um, it's something that uh, we have continued to kind of innovate and um, change and adjust as we learn more about um, the demand for this type of shelter, um, more about the operation of uh, this type of site, and um, just trying to remain flexible and meet the needs of veterans who are looking for this type of emergency shelter on um, their journey to more permanent housing. Um, so specific to the CTRS fire, um, 12 shelter units were completely destroyed during the fire and an additional 10 were damaged. Um, at this point, um, and I think it occurred November. Uh, sorry, I should have had the date on this, but um, the beginning of November, there was an event out here to replace all the damaged and destroyed shelters. So um, all of the 
um, shelters have been removed from the site and replaced with new shelters. Um, most importantly, no veterans or staff were injured um, or um, hurt during this fire. Um, I think we were very impressed with the response from our 24 seven security that were out there and having strong protocols set up with our VA police who quickly notified the VA, um, the Los Angeles Fire Department who was out on site. Um, and I think this is also a real testament to the veteran residents themselves who have a pretty strong community out there and um, understand had kind of a quick notice process of helping their fellow veterans evacuate fire uh, shelters or kind of move off the site. Um, so we're extremely thankful that there were no injuries from this fire. Um, and I think it gave us an opportunity to think about what are the lessons learned from this event. Um, and what sort of ongoing site improvements um, in our um, operation of this environment uh, can we make? As part of the response to this, we uh, have issued enhanced safety protocols and um, ramped up enforcement of some of the rules out there. Um, specifically, this fire we traced back to uh, charging of a lithium battery. Um, so we've uh, relocated all of the electric bike and bicycle. Um, areas away from the residential area and in a separate kind of uh, bike pickup and storage location that's adjacent to the site. Um, we also did um, a couple fire drills, uh, resident meetings, and um, site inspections where we went through each um, with the residents there, um, shelter area, and kind of identified high risk um, items that they may have stored in their shelter. Um, so it's been kind of an ongoing process working with the veterans out there and the staff to um, make sure that uh, we're trying to keep this site as safe as possible. I think that's also acknowledging that this is a harm reduction environment and it's not as safe as permanent housing. And part of these um, conversations with the residents out there and work with the social workers and peer support specialists throughout there is to continue to encourage every veteran out there to pursue a permanent housing plan to work with, um, in a lot of cases, uh, their their VASH um, uh, social worker to get connected to a permanent housing unit. But that's that's our goal. The CTRS area uh, we, we want to continue to reiterate is not a permanent um, apartment or unit. This is um, an emergency shelter. Um, so 21, 20 veterans and one partner were affected by the fire. Um, VA quickly made contact with all those who were impacted. Uh, 15 veterans were rehoused at other sites in CTRS, three were placed in hotels with the partner. One entered a GPD transitional housing program and one elected to um, stay with family and no longer desired VA services. Um, we did have our um, volunteer uh, and civic engagement staff there on site the day of the fire, providing veterans with replaced um, donated goods for stuff that was lost in the fire with food, water, clothing. Um, we had a bunch of VSOs out there uh, dropping off um, goods and uh, helping veterans who were impacted by the fire, as well as everyone really on site to um, get anything that may have been lost. VBA, our Veteran Benefits Administration was out there um, setting up an office on site, helping replace documents that were lost. Um, and um, something that kind of came up uh, in some of the reporting around this that um, we thought was important to address was whether um, there was proper fire hydrants uh, within proximity to the site. Um, we did uh, work closely with LA, the fire department to do an after action report and um, confirmed that there were proper uh, fire hydrants within the required uh, distance to the site. That being said, um, we are installing additional fire hydrants uh, as the site continues to grow um, that uh, will be um, even closer, uh, but um, wanted to kind of dispel that there's a rumor that there were no fire hydrants anywhere um, that the fire department could use. Um, so yeah, the availability of fire hydrants uh, per LAFD was not an issue in the response. Um, I have a few other slides on here. Um, one is just to kind of show, and I'm sorry, I know these are small photos, but uh, I can send these out. 
to Anthony, the distribute to the group, but just the evolution of what this site and program has become. This started in 2020 during the pandemic as um, an emergency shelter initiative with tents on a parking lot, um, kind of based off of um, some other sites we've seen in the community around safe parking, um, where uh, we're trying to create an environment that's as low barrier as possible. Um, and have uh, veterans um, with security and uh, social work and clinical staff um, there to try and get them to um, work with us on their housing uh, journeys. As we've um, moved the site from the parking lot to our lawn area, um, we've kind of evolved from having tents um, and rows, as you can see uh, in the top row here, um, we, we paved certain areas and started installing these tiny shelters based on some of the other sites we've seen throughout the community um, and recommendations from some of our partners around um, what could make this site um, more appealing uh, to, to meet this, this demand. Um, another uh, situation that got a lot of press and uh, you, you were probably aware of during um, the pandemic, there was a encampment adjacent to the West LA VA um, veterans row. Um, this was, uh, as you can see in this bottom left corner picture, directly across from where our CTRS site is set up. And um, we ultimately worked with the veterans um, in veterans row and um, the LA Sheriff's Department and, and really a big um, testament to a lot of the advocates and partners who were um, helping um, support those veterans on veterans row we were able to transition them into our CTRS uh, site. Um, and uh, some of them have uh, moved into uh, more permanent housing and uh, others are um, still residing at the CTRS site. Um, then I mentioned some of the additional site improvements uh, that have, um, that we're continuing to work on for um, enhancing safety out at CTRS. Um, adding a few uh, additional fire hydrants, um, doing some more thing uh, to help with access um, as the site expands, um, adding additional um, shelters on the site right now. I think the capacity is 140, um, but some of those are uh, drop-in shelters for veterans who may show up uh, outside of business hours or kind of in the middle of the evening, needing somewhere temporary to, to stay while they get um, connected and admitted into a program. Um, adding additional administ administrative trailers, um, something that is really important for us as the site grows is to make sure that we have adequate staff to be able to monitor and support the veterans that are residents there. And again, really focusing on um, helping them identify uh, more permanent indoor environments, whether it's trans transitional housing or ideally permanent housing um, to to move into. Um, hey, Andrew, this this is uh, Anthony. Sorry to yeah, no worries. Sorry to interrupt. Um, so we're we're basically at the ten minute mark, um, and we have a few other presentations. So I just want to open it up to commissioners if there's any follow up questions at this point. Um, Commissioner Anderson, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Strain, uh, how would you place CTRS as uh, uh, operating in the uh, in the alignment of the the master plan and complete? What's what's the way ahead? Do you think? I I think our our focus and um, where we put a lot of our resources towards is permanent housing. Um, we want to continue to work through the master plan's uh, commitment to build 1,200 units of permanent supportive housing on the West LA VA. Um, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to come back and present more about the status of those construction projects. Uh, really are, would like to hear that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we're excited. I think we're set to see the next phase of housing open. It's about 179 units um, in early 2023, around January. Um, CTRS, I think, is an important program that's meeting a gap of emergency shelter. Um, but a oh, you know, broken record here, I'll, I'll keep saying this is not permanent housing. CTRS is not um, the final 
destination for the veterans who are who are living there. And we really want to encourage them to um, move into more stable environments. Can you speak candidly kind of to what the uh, morale factor is within a uh, uh, a close, uh, a densely uh, arranged uh, uh, alignment of uh, of uh, tiny houses? How, how are people doing How Do they like it? Do they hate it? What's the what's the mix? I think with anything um, you'll you'll see mixed reviews. Um, I think some folks um, are interestingly coming back to CTRS um, after having been in permanent housing or in a different program and um, kind of prefer it in, in that environment. Um, I think we see others who kind of embrace this as a stepping stone into something more permanent and, and are having to move along. I think what um, I'm also struck by, and Dr. Braverman, our, our director, speaks really well to this, is the sense of community that's out there amongst people that moved into CTRS as a group looking to find their next permanent housing, ideally on the West LAVA, um, together as a group. So I think there's a lot of tight knit community amongst the residents that are out there wanting to stick together. OK, thank you. I have a question, Mr. Andrew. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Really nice. I mean, like anything, unfortunately, it took a fire um, for these new improvements to take place. So I really appreciate looking at the map and looking at the new placement of pumps. I'd imagine every tiny house is, has an evacuation plan, an area for them where, where the veterans are going to run to in the event. We hope that there's not going to be another fire. But thank you very much for that. I'm very happy to hear the stand down. Um, I'm also hopeful that a lot of those veterans living in those tiny homes made their way to the stand down. And in reference to where the tiny homes are to the stand down, I mean, it's in the general facility, correct? I mean, I know the West LA is West LA, but I'm sure the contingency was to invite pretty much all of them to go get those supportive services, correct, Andrew? Absolutely, yeah. We've been trying to market the stand down to veterans and CTRS and our domiciliary and um, all our transitional housing programs that are on the property and across our, our catchment area. Uh, I've coming from the standout, I had to keep my shirt on to represent here. Um, I saw a bunch of veterans that I recognize from CTRS from the resident meetings out there at the stand down. Um, if nothing else to get barbecue and donations, but hopefully also to kind of connect with um, VA social work and work through you know, any uh, documentation needs or what have you. Um, so uh, I'm going to run back out there once this is over and help with the, the teardown. But um, I think from what I saw, there was a strong turnout of veterans currently residing on the property and um, also from uh, elsewhere. Thank you, Andrew. I think when you do come back, some of the things I would like to hear is uh, the successes of the vet village. How many have processed through? How many have sex successfully transitioned into a long term program? I think it'd be very nice uh, to hear about that. Just the successes of it outside of a fire. So, Andrew, we look forward to a future presentation. Thank you for your time, Chairman. I have no further questions. OK, great. We're running a little bit behind schedule, commissioners. Any any other follow ups on, on this uh, agenda item? OK, hearing none. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate it. Thanks for the update. We'll move on to the next agenda item, which I believe should be the Department of Human Resources update. Um, if my memory is correct. Yeah, great. So uh, we have Lauren and David. David from LA County HR. Uh, Lauren, David, are you uh, good to go on audio? Yes, we're uh, we're good to go on audio, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, and thank you again, commissioners and other members that are here for inviting Lauren Robinson and I to talk with you on behalf of the Department of Human Resources on this important topic of veterans credit. So a key focus of DHR and the county in general is to provide career pipelines into public service. Uh, as you know, our, our, our leadership is has a really passion and interest in working with our veteran community, and in particular to assist veterans with gaining employment with the county once they return to civilian life and even onward beyond that. 
Um, our veterans credit policy that we currently have is one tool available to give our service members a boost when applying for county jobs. And today what we're going to talk about is to discuss our veterans credit how, and how it currently operates and also to discuss potential gaps that we've identified in our current model and how we are ex seeking to expand uh, coverage uh, to, to expand those that are eligible for veterans credit uh, through future improvements to the policy and other authorities. Next slide, please. Uh, to provide a quick background on the Veterans Credit Program, uh, the county's hiring process is governed by the merit system. Uh, all candidates are afforded the same opportunity to compete for a role, often through a competitive examination. And by action of the Board of Supervisors, military veterans are afforded a unique benefit when applying to open competitive examinations for county positions. And in particular, the county charter provides the authority to grant military veterans and their spouses in certain circumstances with the credit of 10% of the total exam points for their total score. And so essentially what that means is that for those veterans who pass the county examination, 10 points are added to their score and that can help them become uh, more, easy, uh, more easily reachable um, for an examination for an appointment. Um, in many cases, um, the, the veterans credit score um, it doesn't guarantee employment, but again, because of how the county rules are set up, it, it assists with those veterans having a better opportunity to be interviewed to actually be uh, selected. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Um, so the chartered language is very specific when it comes to the application of the credit. It grants the points only to veterans who served in the armed forces in a time of war or international police action and who are honorably discharged. There are some challenges in that language to account for more veterans um, that the charter provision was likely intended to cover when it was first drafted. But because of that actual language, there's some challenge as, of course, we have many veterans who may not have, you know, almost all veterans, for example, haven't served in a time of war. They may have served in a time of police action, et cetera. But again, we've been looking for opportunities to expand the credit uh, to, to more veterans. Um, for example, as we know, it's no longer the, you know, the, the government doesn't really declare wars that often when engaging in military combat. I believe the last war that was declared was in World War II. And so that's that's kind of some of the language in the charter that we would like to consider potentially um, changing to allow for more credits of veterans to serve. Um, so to address that that shortfall, the board clarified in a 2003 motion that credit also extends to veterans who were awarded a campaign or expeditionary medal for service during a combat operation. And that credit mirrors the criteria set by the Federal Office of Personal Management and serves as a foundation for veterans credit. Next slide. Thanks, David, and I can take it from here. So I am going to be talking about the potential revisions to this policy that our team has been working on with MVA. Before we get into that, though, I do want to acknowledge the impact our current process is making because our team did do a review of the county's application system uh, when we started this process to see if veterans credit is being applied to our exams. And our view shows that veterans credit is being applied to thousands of countywide exams each year. So while we know that this process in its current form does um, need some improvements to truly capture all members of our veteran community. I do want to emphasize that it is benefiting our veterans right now, so we're just going to be there to make it better for everyone. So going into the improvements itself. Now, following an in-depth review of the current policy and after discussions with several subject matter experts and our military community, we've identified a few barriers to support all veterans populations as we believe that the charter language intended. So first, as David explained, the county is limited in our current authority for where veterans credit can be applied. The charter provision only grants credit to veterans in time of war 
or international police actions. So this is complicated for our recent veterans, um, since, as David mentioned, it's no longer practice to formally declare war, which is a more defined concept and has set time periods and end dates. That's not so much the case for our current combat operations, which makes targeting this wartime as intended by the Charter a lot more challenging. So our current policy does address this challenge by allowing veterans credit for recipients of campaign and expeditionary medals. This is the same as OPM does for veterans credit um, preference because this is really clear proof of service during a conflict. However, in talking with MVA and some of our exams folks, we're beginning to realize that this practice in effect limits our veterans credit to combat veterans rather than veterans as a blanket statement. This means that um, there may be service members who serve stateside or in non-combat missions or those that perhaps got an injury during training and were never deployed who would be denied veterans credit under our current practice. Another challenge of linking um, military time periods with conflict um, is that there's no central listing of campaign or expeditionary medals we have found. So this makes it very hard to verify veterans credit for um, exam analysts and even for some veterans. In talking to MVA, we found that sometimes medals are even awarded after the fact. And so some you know, veteran applicants may not know that they now hold a qualifying medal that would get them this veterans credit. So as I mentioned, these are things we have been working to understand, uh, just the complexities of the military world and, and how this is being applied. Um, and we've really been trying to understand any potential inequities for female veterans in particular, um, since they have historically not been placed in combat roles as frequently. And as this commission may have seen, in addition to uh, the areas that we're exploring, Supervisor Barger did put out a motion on November 1st asking us to go even further than we were already considering in this area. So she asked us to explore the feasibility of including other populations as recipients of veterans credit. Um, this includes members of the National Guard and also veterans who received other than honorable discharges for reasons that have nothing to do with their service, such as discharge under the don't ask, don't tell policy. Any revisions to our veterans credit policy to be candid is going to be a very large task and something that's going to require a lot of conversations with our legal counsel to determine what we have the authority to do at this moment under our existing charter and civil service rules. And of course, we want to engage in discussions like this one with our county military experts, um, with MVP, with this commission to make sure that we get this right when we put it out. What we do know, it's not going to be a quick fix um, because we are bound by our charter. So our current concept is to do it in two ways um, to do both a short term and a long term solution. So in the short term, our goal is to explore whether we can move away from reliance on campaign and expeditionary medals and simply acknowledge that all recent military veterans since 2001 have not enlisted in peacetime <laughs> as that concept is, and they went in knowing they could be called to active combat. We think this is what the charter meant to cover when it specified veterans who served in time of war. We also want to provide more information up front to help applicants and our exam analysts understand our definition of veteran and clearly explain which documentation they need to get the credit. We also want to provide our exam analysts with direct resources to MVA so they can easily consult on complicated cases before they determine that someone doesn't qualify under our policy. For the long term, any broad sweeping change would require a change to the county charter, which is a very involved process. This requires voter approval, which means it needs to get on the ballot, just as we saw with Measure A last week. Um, and this, of course, means time and funding needs to be dedicated to communication around this issue. Um, but by amending the charter, we could remove outdated language that's currently in it. We can make this credit easier to understand and apply. We can also potentially uncouple the credit from wartime and simply provide credit to anyone who lists in military service within certain parameters um, to account for our current military practices. I'll pass it to you, David. Thank you. And, you know, as you know, we really value our partnership with the uh, Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, um, its new director, uh, Mr. Zenner, and this commission. Before we actually uh, recommended changing the policies, as Lauren talked about in our first phase, before we would uh, do a potential charter change, uh, change we did want to engage this commission 
um, to because we understand that there are a lot of nu nuances that civilians, I'm not a veteran, Lauren's not a veteran, that we may not be aware of when it comes to the military community. And so we're really trying to reach out and to engage the veteran community. We've had a lot of discussions, a lot of our internal employees are veterans that we've talked to as well. And so we're really committed to expanding the, the credit um, how we can. And again, as Lauren mentioned, in our first phase, what we were thinking about and, and recommending is that we move away from this metal concept because um, again, at the individual department stage, all of the exam analysts would need to be well versed on all of the intricacies of which metals are what and what they mean. And we were looking at the feasibility and we're consulting with county council about the international police action component of the charter. And as we know, since uh, 2001 in particular, after 9-11, um, we have been engaged in military operations. There has not been um, a declared war per se, but there has been a lot of legislation that was passed uh, by Congress, signed by, by presidents to, uh, to, to fight the war on terror, for example. And so if we can expand uh, our definition to include um, some of these actions, we can at least account for those veterans um, you know, and who have served. And then again, as a longer term step, uh, potentially change the county charter, but that would require the consent of the, the residents of, of the county of Los Angeles. Um, hey, uh, yeah. David, Lauren, I just wanna, we're, we're getting close to time. We're a little bit over time, but I, I think it's important that uh, maybe the commissioners get to ask a few follow-up questions. I mean, this is a pretty technical issue, but I think you've done a great job outlining you know what the issues are what the path forward looks like um do you have a timeline a sense for the short term short term understanding updating the county charter is a, a lengthy ordeal in the short term what's your right, timeline so, but, looking like yeah that's a that's a great question for the short term you know we do have as lauren mentioned we have the motion from supervisor barger who wanted us to explore even further to explore mm -hmm. about you know um issues and so that actually has a 180 day turnaround. And so our department will have to respond to that motion. And by the time that we respond to that motion, we want to be able to be well along in terms of um, the, the finalized version of the draft of the policy. We have already circulated some um, earlier versions of a, a update to the veterans credit policy. But now considering this new motion, I think we have more things to add and to consider. So to answer your question, I would say um, within the next six months, we plan to have um, a policy ready to go. And then what would happen with our policies, they have to actually go to, to our labor partners. So they have to go mm -hmm. to the various unions and that would we would work in consultation with, uh, with the chief executive office and the re labor relations. And we would have consultations um, with those labor organizations because it would impact their members. And so um, we we hope to do phase one, actually updating our policy within the six months. Now, whether or not that the policy is finalized by then, I can't quite say, but we're going to move as fast as we can. But at the same time, we wanna be as thorough as we can so that we can make sure that sure. We're, you know, we're including as many veterans to get this credit as possible while adhering to the to the charter. And I will say piggybacking on David, um, to be brief, we've done a lot of work on this already. So I think a lot of the hard work of even understanding campaign medals and what the charter means and speaking with council has been done. Um, but now we just have to consider this new motion. We have to make sure that we've we've basically crossed all our T's at this point. Mm -hmm. Is there any plans for public engagement? And I'll open the floor to other commissioners. I mean, I think I speak on behalf of the commissioners. I say I think we welcome this this conversation, but in terms of engaging other veteran groups, just to say that you know we we've, we've shared this idea with the public, with the veteran community. This is feedback that we've received. Yeah, I think, um, and you know, David, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you know, we we are very much wanting to get as much feedback as we can on this policy mm -hmm. in particular because of the um, population it impacts. Um, mm -hmm. We have been regularly engaging with MVA and our contacts over there on, you know, our initial plans. Sure. This commission was our next step to hopefully get it, you know, elevated to the right folks. Yeah. 
Um, well, this and, will be we, recorded and available yes. online, and so people can can reference it. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh no, and we you know we are still searching for other groups that may be um, appropriate to vet this by. Okay. Um, so I you know I would welcome some other recommendations. I know there is some employee associations for military members and veterans who we may consider. Okay. Well, I see your contact information here. So members of the public, if they're interested, they can they can reach out to you all directly. Yeah. Uh, commissioners, is there anything? Uh, any other commissioners want to follow up on this item? Uh, just briefly, Commissioner Anderson, go ahead. Yes. Can you uh, can you study uh, or have you? Will you make a study of the state of California um, and federal employment? Uh, standards for what constitutes a veteran and and will that help you? Yeah, and I can say we have done that already. Um, some of our preliminary research is seeing what other public agencies do, both um, cities and other counties in California, as well as the state. And of course, you know, um, OPM's Veterans Preferences is, is kind of the, the guiding star for us. So we certainly take that into consideration. Um, the challenge is that there are a few different definitions floating around of a veteran and um, one of the challenges that we saw too is that OPM's veterans credit is tiered and accounts for other populations that our charter does not speak to. Um, so we are limited in how closely we could align with them, but we're actually seeing some opportunities where we aren't as limited as they are because they are um, consigned to I think it's it's title five language for what they can count whereas we have a bit more broad of an interpretation of our charter um, so that's a long way of saying yes we have been considering that yes definitely and, and, it, and I did want to add we had circulated some earlier drafts of a policy change to for example the Department of Military and Veterans Affairs we plan to do that can, uh, ongoing so we're going to update the draft we're going to look at Supervisor Barger's motion. We're going to have additional updates that we make, and we all we so we will definitely circulate that before we move forward. Um, and 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 like Lauren said, we're we've looked at the state, we looked at the feds, we've looked at um, surrounding jurisdiction, and I and our long term goal is to actually expand and to provide veterans credit to a much larger percent of the population than even the federal government does, and and uh, to a larger population than any other. Uh, jurisdiction that we found any other public jurisdiction and so that's what kind of our north star is um because mm -hmm. you know we 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 see that uh, you, you know that individuals who uh decided to to serve our country um they they should be recognized great well that almost you know wraps us up the, the last thing that just came to mind is whatever draft language there is or maybe when you're getting closer to something that you all are comfortable sharing with the public and maybe we can do a public comment period with with the department maybe the department can put it out to its mailing list and allow you know 30 days of comment um you know, i'm sort of reminded of what the homeless initiative did with the funding recommendations i think that would be a great way to say at least you know dhr consulted the the community in a meaningful way that's very cool i i think that's that awesome. would be really welcome by us yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, well, I'll, yes, that would be fantastic. Okay, sounds good. Uh, appreciate your time, and we have to move on to the next agenda item. Uh, I think we have Lassa here. Jen Escobosa, are you here? I am here. I'm working on my, my camera. One second. Okay, no problem. If Do you have uh, slides for today? I do. Okay, great. So I, I don't think I need a request control. I think I, it's just a matter of sharing. Um, Might be a mixture of both. Yeah. So let me know if you can see that. Yes, great. Oh. Um, I think we just Thank need you. to get into presentation mode and you're good to go. Yeah, let me make that just a little bit bigger for everyone. I think we can get started. Perfect. Um, great, good afternoon. go ahead. My name is Janice Glosa. I'm the Veteran System Coordinator at LASA. Um, and I am very well aware that it is not November 10th. Um, this presentation was was ready for an earlier meeting um, that I guess got moved to today. Um, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, the homeless count 
is required by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, more commonly known as HUD, and as lead agency in the Los Angeles Continuum of Care. Um, LASA is charged with coordinating the point in time count for most of LA County. Um, we say most because there's a couple of cities um, throughout LA County that conduct their own counts, and unfortunately those numbers are not included in our numbers. Some of those cities would be Long Beach, um, Glendale, for example. Um, the pit count is a regional tool that is best util utilized as a snapshot of the issue in LA County as a point in time. Um, that's very important to remember, um, which does help us inform comprehensive policy and direct resources in response. Um, I want to start off by recognizing that there was a pandemic, uh, as you all may be aware of, uh, and it had a deeply profound effect on homelessness. Investments from our government partners um, at a state and a federal level, uh, it really made the homeless system work a little bit better. In the earlier days of the pandemic, all of these local governments, all of these governments came together under the shared goal of placing as many COVID vulnerable unhoused individuals into hotel rooms as part, as, as part of the project room key. And in the veteran systems, as part of a ramp up of emergency housing assistance through our SSBF partners. Um, and through these through these efforts, we were actually able to place 40% of participants into permanent housing. Um, and so the pandemic really did show us what we could do through coordinated efforts, um, but also it did prevent us from completing a point in time count in 2021. So that's important to recognize that there's been a two year gap in the numbers. This year we are estimating that there were over 69,000 people experiencing homelessness on any given night in LA County, um, which does represent a 4.1% increase from 2020. So let's see what that looks like when we break it down. So when we break it down through region, um, you can see generally speaking, we didn't, we didn't see a whole lot of changes across the spas. Um, as compared to the count two years ago, there were some notable exceptions. In SPA 5, we did see a drop of 23% in people experiencing homelessness. And SPA 5 is going to be that West LA, um, Santa Monica region. Um, and then we also saw an increase in SPA 6 and 8. And so while the numbers I'm showing you are representative of the entire homeless population in LA County um, as as the person who does manage the veteran by nameless, I can say that we were seeing the exact same thing in the veteran systems. Um, this year's homeless count did reveal that 39.5% of our unhoused neighbors report experiencing mental illness or substance use, which is actually lower than the national average. Um, and so what the, what that does tell us is that we do have 60.5% of people experiencing homelessness who don't report these issues. So again, with the launch of Project Room Key and the ramp up of emergency housing through SSBF, um, we saw over 4,000 people who are experiencing addiction or mental health issues we we were able to engage them and get them into safe shelter um, and it cannot be overstated how the model of a private room shelter has proven much more successful than other traditional models um, and so i will share out that we are constantly advocating for this as somebody who was previously a long-term direct service provider i saw the difference that allowing people their own room um, their own space, just the difference that it made in really engaging veterans. And so not a fun fact, but one of my favorite facts to share out is that homelessness did grow in most in 99% of the other populate subpopulations. Um, but in the veteran world, we saw a drop in LA County by 6.1%, which is actually on trend with the national decline where um, we actually saw an 11 percent national de national decline in veteran homelessness. Um, and I'm going to pause a little bit here just to share out um, again. I do manage the by name list and there's always been a difference in the pick count and the point in time count and the by name list numbers. Um, and I want to share out as a personal victory 
as a victory in the continuum, that this year's difference was actually just under 300 veterans, and that speaks volumes to the work that our VA outreach, SSBF outreach, our VA, our VPAM partners, um, it just speaks volumes to the work that they've done really in terms of outreaching efforts and ensuring that all veterans are, um, that do have to sleep on the streets, that they're engaged and they're connected. Um, additionally, some of the other work that's being done is connecting um, non-traditional veteran, non-traditional service providers, hospitals, um, colleges, libraries, and even school districts, making sure that they have an inroad in, into veteran services. Um, and so through all of these efforts, we're really closing the gap. And I'm actually really excited to see what next year's numbers are going to look like and how close, how much closer we are um, getting too did, close did, to that. Can I ask a quick follow-up question? The the yes. number you referenced, veterans homelessness shrank 6.1% in the LA continuum of care, not LA County, right? Correct. Um, well, yes. And so the LA continuum of care, again, it goes back to those, there's a few regions that right. do their own count. Um, and so off the top of my head, I know I've already said Long Beach, um, Glendale. I'm trying to think if there's- Pasadena. There was Pasadena. There, there's a couple yeah. little- um, and so their numbers are not um, connected to our numbers. Right. So I just want to explore this a little bit because I think the general public, it's it's a little confusing. So you have LASA, which is the L.A. continuum of care. And then there are three other continuums of care within L.A. County. Right. So I think most people, when they hear LASA speak, right, they don't understand that it's a subcomponent. It's it's a it's a vast majority of of LA County, but not all of LA County. But when LASA reports data, it reports two sets of data: one for the continuum of care, and then there's another set of county that's uh, I'm sorry that's specific to LA County. So you know one of the things that I noticed, and I just want to put on your radar, is for 2020, LASA reported out. Uh, veterans information countywide. And then for 2022, because there was the jump in 21, LASA reported out information for veterans at the continuum of care level. And I think it's it's it, it can be confusing to some people. Yes, absolutely. I do agree. I will share out that um, I'm not personally quite sure why there is a difference between in 2020, it was shared out as a countywide and now mm -hmm. we're we're breaking, um, we're breaking off yeah. from from those from those smaller continuums. Um, I, the only piece of information I do have regarding that is that their numbers haven't been shared with us, and so yeah. that could mean one of two things. That could mean that we're just going to proceed with continuum level numbers, right. or that we're just kind of waiting around for them to share their numbers, make those publicly, yeah. and then we'll integrate those into our numbers. My, my uh, and I don't want to cut into your time too much. My my read on that is that it's hard for LASA to figure out whether or not it's a countywide reporting agency or if it's just the LA continuum of care. And it's a conflict, I think, and this is just my outside opinion of what LASA is because the data for LA County is on um, LASA's website. It's there. And it just, yeah, I think it's just, are we, a, are we a continuum of care or are we a representative of homeless services for LA County? And that's my non, you know, professional opinion on that. That's what it strikes me as, as a member of the public, but um, I don't want to belabor that, that point too much. No, I mean, that's an important question and that's something definitely worth pursuing clarification on. And I can absolutely yeah. do that and then share that out with you. I'm not quite sure how that would get to the public. Um, yeah, yeah, um, but I'll definitely pursue that. Um, sorry. So uh, let me just wrap up my presentation and then we can definitely open it up for questions. Yeah, sorry. That was my fault. I should have just let you finish. You're OK. You're OK. Um, so something that we need to make note of and something that LASA and even our VA partners has really been making a focus on is really breaking down this data, breaking down these numbers and seeing who is being most impacted. Um, and so we continue to see that people who are black or African-American are still overrepresented. Um, they account for 
almost 30% of the individuals experiencing homelessness while still only making up 9% of the LA County population. Um, and again, there's a lot of work being at LASA and with our partners at the VA that's centered around racial equity. Um, and there's they're reviewing policies and they're revamping everything just to to do what we can to overcome any any um, historical policies that are helping or sorry <laughs> um, that are maintaining these numbers that are creating barriers for our unhoused neighbors of color to establish housing and maintain it. So again, if we continue to focus on the root causes um, such as these policies that are in place that are honestly bad policies that continue to withhold wealth, land, they, they continue to create barriers in home ownership for people of color, and we continue to coordinate our efforts, um, there's a really strong belief that not only can we slow down the homeless rate, we can even end it. So conclusions, homelessness is rising at much slower levels than in previous years. Um, a lot of that does have to do with the pandemic funding that we had access to. Um, tents, vehicles, makeshift shelters, um, they have increased and they're more visible, but there are less people in them. Um, and we're still trying to figure out what that means. Um, in terms of. Does sorry, we're trying to figure out what that means in terms of our families. Um, getting smaller are is homelessness impacting more individuals rather than families and so more information on that is to come again policies and investment did prevent homelessness from growing even worse during covid i again i will share out throughout through the bulk of covid i was a direct service provider and there was a huge concern about what that would mean for the homeless numbers and so thankfully it was it actually was not as bad as we had um, expected it to be ongoing investments in mental health and substance use. Um, it's needed again. We're going back to that 30% of individuals who are reporting the, the need for these services. Um, there are more people in, than ever in shelter. Um, and again, just. I don't think I touched upon this, but people of color, including. Um, the, the Latino community, um, they continue to be overrepresented. Um, Latino community actually now represents the highest growing demographic in homelessness. And, and while our work might never end, we I remain optimistic. I know LASA remains optimistic that we can actually make a huge impact and we can reduce homelessness in our communities. And so that is my presentation. Let me see if okay. I can stop sharing. Quick follow up question. Yep. I'm not sure if you saw the email. Does um, LASA track inventory for project based uh, housing units for veterans? The LA we, Times reported a while back that there was you know, hundreds of available units um, for specifically for homeless veterans. And do we have an update on what that number actually looks like today? We do, and I'm actually really glad that Andrew's on this call. Um, because he's going to be better able to answer that. I know that there's been a lot of efforts um, with Andrew and other staff at LASA to clarify what those numbers are and. Yeah. Andrew, thank you okay. for not leaving after your presentation. <laughs> I was curious, Jen, I wanted to stick around and hear your presentation. Um, and I'm yeah, kind of delinquent in my responsibility, tearing down canopies right now. Um, well, but yeah. Anthony, am I allowed to jump in here or is it kind of formal? Uh, I'll, yeah, let's just maybe get something quick for the record and then we'll. Uh... So, yeah, I mean, for the record, yes, VA absolutely works with LASA. We both track uh, vacancies and project based voucher buildings. Um, I think I'm pulling up one of our trackers now. We've got. Um, do, would it, want that just sorry, just to just to throw it out. Would it be possible to submit it to the commission as a record document just to get a, a snapshot in time of what that looks like today? Yes, if you can send that to me in email. Um, sure. And include the folks who've been on this VA distribution group. I think that's something we can provide. And I know it's something we report out 
in okay. various other venues. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, because we just need, need to get to the next item. But I think you know, going back to taking a look at what is the current inventory, what is the vacancy rate, and maybe discuss. You know, again, we can do this another time. What are the obstacles to leasing up those units? Yeah. I'm sorry, Jen. I'm talking too much during your presentation, but I think at some point. You should ask maybe Loss and VA to talk about their referral process for these um, project based voucher um, buildings. Yeah. And we'd love to share some of the developments we've been collaborating on to um, kind of better publicize. And I know VA has been working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And, you know, I think when it's ready for public, you know, sort of rollout, I would love to do a joint event. Um, well, I shouldn't say the commission, but, you know, I, I'm sure that there would be a lot of interest from the department to do a joint event. Really quick, because we're running late. Um, commissioners, do you have any follow-ups regarding the loss of briefing? I would like to ask a question, please. Uh, Commissioner Jackson Kelly, go for it. Yes, I know you mentioned uh, the influx of um, campers and things like that. So, and you said there are less people living in there. Well, I've seen a massive increase in the number of campers. How are these people identified? And how can you tell when there's less people living in them? Um, that's something I'm going to have to get back to you um, quite transparently. Th this is just data that is shared out with me um, from our access and engagement department, but I can definitely follow up. Um, again, there's a few questions that have been asked. I'll, I'll put those all together. And is there a specific person I should forward these answers to? I was just our chair. Um, yeah, you can uh, forward them to Stephanie Gu Guerrero and uh, the chairman. Yeah. Thank you. I do have Stephanie's email. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, any other commissioners? Okay. Hearing none. Thank you, Jen. We appreciate it. And Andrew. Um, I think we're going to circle back to uh, you know the referral process at a later at a later date, probably in the new year. Absolutely, and and I'm in constant communication with a few people on here. As soon as that's finalized, we can absolutely um, maybe even it might be Stephanie that we connect with to have somebody come on and provide that information to the group. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, we'll move to the next agenda item. Waiting for the slide to come up. OK, so this is a, a point in which I'm going to. Relieve myself of the chairmanship duties. I'm going to hand it to Vice Chair Anderson um, because I don't think I can moderate myself. Um, I, I don't think that would be appropriate. So Vice Chair, if you want to take it from here. Yeah, accepting for the good of the order and uh, I would now uh, defer back to uh, Chairman Allman to make uh, the presentation about the recommendation, uh, which uh, is in in play right now. OK, so you, uh, that, you are free to proceed, sir. OK, I think from here we'll just go to a reading of the recommendation and then um, possibly entertain a motion to discuss it further. But I just want to read it into the record. So that way everyone has an opportunity to think about it. We can go to the next slide, I guess. One more slide. OK, so I'm going to read this uh, for everyone's general information and, and we'll take it from there. Uh, Lack fact recommendation number one, whereas California vehicle code 12811 provides a mechanism between the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, Department of Motor Vehicles, and the California Association of County Veterans Service Officers to acknowledge verification of veteran status. Whereas a veteran may obtain a California driver's license and or identification card with the word veteran printed on the card after meeting with the County Veteran Service Officer 
in submitting proof of such meeting to the Department of Motor Vehicles, whereas Section 641 of the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2022 provides active duty service members, military veterans, and Gold Star families with, a with free lifetime access to national parks and federal recreational lands, whereas Public Resources Code Section uh, 5011.5 entitles veterans under specified criteria who are also state who are also state residents with a pass which permits free use of all facilities, including boat launching facilities in units of the state park park system. Whereas the city and county of San Francisco passed ordinance 238-21 on December 14, 2021, which reduces or eliminates fees for admission to and use of certain facilities on park property for veterans and active members of the United States Armed Forces. Whereas the Los Angeles County Veterans Advisory Commission received a briefing from LA County Department of Parks and Recreation and discussed the issue of free veteran access to parks and recreation facilities on January 12th, 2022. And whereas the Los Angeles County Veterans Advisory Commission received a briefing from LA County Department of Beaches and Harbors and discussed the issue of free veteran access to beaches and harbor facilities on February 9th, 2022. Therefore, be it resolved on November 16th, 2022, Los Angeles County Veterans Advisory Commission recommends that the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors implement a comprehensive program that provides military veterans with free parking and admission to county owned and operated public lands. Examples include, but are not limited to, parks, nature centers and gardens, golf courses, recreation areas, fitness, aquatic and outdoor facilities, theaters, stages, museums, and beaches. Veterans would be required to furnish a valid California identification and or driver's license with veteran designation to qualify for such incentives. The Veterans Advisory Commission understands that certain exceptions would be necessary, for example, leased events, but encourages the board to adopt an ordinance bringing the County of Los Angeles closer to existing federal and local government programs regarding free access, free veteran access to public lands. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I would ask now, do we need to entertain a motion to discuss or can we just move to discussion of the recommendation? I would actually like to make a motion to amend if that's, if that's at all possible. Um, we even need a second to see those amendments. Motion to amend, do I understand? Correct. Do we have a motion to undertake any amendment? Uh, I'm, I'm not clear. <laughs> this is Commissioner Jackson Kelly. Are you saying that you would like to amend the document or do you want someone else to vote on amendment for the document? I would like to present an amendment to okay. the existing document before we discuss it. Um, can we hear what the uh, can we hear what the what the amendment would be? <laughs> sure. Uh, I. Do we need a motion to see that or? Oh, you don't. Yeah. OK, great. Then I will. Uh, I will share. Um, and this is something that let me know if you could see my screen. Can you all see this? Yeah, well, oh, yes. OK. Um, so previously, uh, Commissioner Zato offered some suggestions which I think are great suggestions. They're small word changes, but it does amend the recommendation as written. So for example, in the fourth whereas clause, we have a change from with to two. That's one amendment. And then we have an amendment in the 
uh, first sentence of the recommendation changing county owned and operated lands to county owned or operated lands. For example, there could be state property that the county manages on behalf of the state. So it's technically not county owned, it's owned by the state. And then there is a discussion item regarding sort of what would be the proper form of identification. And I, I think it's a good discussion point um, for the commission before we would entertain any, any voting on it. This recommendation offers that the veteran would have to show a California uh, driver's license or identification card with veteran designation. That is not a VA healthcare ID card. That is not a military active duty ID card or, or CAC card or DOD card. This is specific to uh, a California identification card with the word veteran imprinted on it. Um, I offer this recommendation specifically with this in mind because I believe that this is an opportunity to uh, refer veterans to the Department of Military Veteran Affairs for a proper assessment of what benefits they may be qualified for. So, for example, if I hold a VA healthcare ID card, which I do, um, that has no bearing on whether or not the veteran has gone through MBA for an assessment. And I think that is very significant. Uh, and again, this is just my opinion, and I think we should discuss it as a board. I think moving forward with a California driver's license with veteran designation is the best way forward. Now, some, some commissioners may disagree with that, and I think we should discuss it, but what that does is it sets up an incentive for more veterans to come to MBA to get an assessment of their benefits prior to receiving this benefit from the county. And in the long run, I think the county stands to gain a great deal from this. So for example, somebody might say, well, this might cost the county money. And I would argue in the beginning, you might lose maybe $6 in parking emission, but in the long run, we could discover that a veteran may be eligible for uh, disability benefits, may be eligible for VA healthcare. Um, they might learn about the college fee waiver for themselves or dependents. There's a great deal that we could benefit from as a county if we're making sure that veterans are assessed properly. And I think a way to do that is to uh, entertain this idea of making public lands available to veterans free of charge. So I'll leave it at that. These are um, a couple of am amendments and um, I'll defer back to the vice chair for discussion. I, I have a comment before we do that. Um, okay, so what about the seniors who do not have a current driving license? They just have a senior ID card. Well, California identification card uh, is, is, it works both ways. It doesn't necessarily need to be a driver's license. You can get a California ID card okay. with a veteran designation. So it's independent of whether or not you actually drive a motor vehicle. Um, and directors enter, maybe you can, it, veteran designation is not solely for driver licenses, correct? Well, I, I'd, I'd open it to the floor for discussion now. And the discussion is um, whether to entertain the amendments, uh, and then the discussion is whether to uh, uh, forward a, a motion uh, to accept the amendments. But I think it uh, opens the floor for discussion of the uh, California ID or driver's license with the veteran designator as the uh, means for eligibility. Well, wouldn't we have to do the motion first before we do the discussion? I, be I believe we would make the, the, the motion to adopt the recommendation, including these amendments. Okay. And then it opens up for discussion. And I would uh, ask for a motion 
to uh, adopt the amendments and also the uh, the uh, point of information on on qualification for the uh, for the benefit. I make a motion that we adopt the information and the amendments that were presented. Do we have a second? Jolie, have a second. Uh, hearing that we have a second, shall we vote on the motion to accept the amendments? Any discussion before we vote? I mean, I, I'm personally, I, I, I don't know if we move to voting right away. This is a whole I, new well, process for the commission, so correct. You know, we're we're experimenting here. So we we are in in discussion, and uh, you mm -hmm. know the only point I I would offer, uh, Chairman, is um, there's some kind of a consideration that if you have a a veteran who's got a a, a VA healthcare card, and uh, he gets refused for the benefit at entry to uh, a county park or beach or something of that nature, uh, parking. Uh, that that could kind of chap them, I think, and uh, that's just a consideration. Sure, and I think it all depends on how um, it's messaged to the veteran community. Let me put it this way: if, if we look at a systems approach, right, and and here's the situation that I'm thinking about. The state of California receives DD-214s for uh, recently discharged veterans who are coming into the state of California. That information is then routed to the county veteran service officer. So in theory, we have a database of hundreds of veterans that return to LA County every month. It would be wonderful if we communicated to them that, hey, welcome back to LA County. As a member of the veterans community, you have access to public lands for free. Come to NBA and we'll get you squared away. And so, uh, you know, there are going to be some veterans that say, I don't need the veteran designation. I don't want it. And that's understandable. But I think if the county is going to offer this benefit, there needs to be an exchange of information. And that's all we ask. Does that make sense to other commissioners? I mean, that's. Hey, Chairman, it does make sense. I, I actually thought that was something that was already happening. Usually what winds up happening is, for example, let's just say within VPAN, you have um, a case that's coming in that has to do with seeking veteran identification on a driver license, right? So the MVA has always been that that funnel, if you will, that we send off those requests through the Unitas platform and or asking them to go into Bob Hope in person so that they can get that paperwork established so that they can get that identifier. Uh, but at that point, MVA would be able to capture if there is any additional uh, services that may be needed, kind of like a triage. Exactly, exactly. And, and yeah, thanks for being here. Now that we have you here, do you mind taking a couple moments to do a tour of the facility, right? Uh, do you, let me show you around. Let me show you what's going on because you might not need this service now, but you may need it in the future. Or you may know somebody, uh, family member, friend, battle buddy, whatever you want to call them that may need those services. So it's very smart to do that since Patriotic Hall is kind of like that one-stop shop, right, where Anybody would know if you want to start off somewhere, go there and every, they have those levels designated so that you can address. And if you can't, they can refer out. But I see where you're going with that, uh, Chairman. Um, I like that. I like the fact that it's a great opportunity for the NBA to see these new re recently released. And or not even that, those have been released for a while to be able to just come in. I think the biggest thing is to get them to go into Bob Pope Patriotic Hall and or a cap wherever those MBA individuals are at, those VSRs. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I'm tracking on what you're saying and I totally support that. I, I think that there are certain things that we could do and discuss what that referral process looks like. But I think in general, 
Look, I went through the process of getting my veteran identifier on my California ID. Doesn't mean anything, right? In terms of there, there's no other than, you know, I did it because I was a county commissioner, right? I did it to understand what the process looked like. What benefit is there? Uh, aside from learning your veteran benefits, that's going to drive a veteran to, to do this process. And I think a great carrot, if you will, is access to public lands. I think we'll capture a lot of veterans that way. And it also brings the county, I think, consistent with this initiative where all public lands are available to, to veterans. So, um, hey, Jared, just, this is our first, oh, go ahead. No, it just, just makes sense. I know we're going over, I just think for me, um, for me, I'm gonna tell you a brief experience for me. Um, I like to be able to access county uh, parks, for example, Bonelli, Pudding Stone, or different areas, because I use that as therapy, therapy to be out in the elements, to be able to walk, walk my mm -hmm. service dog, just being out there. So it's a, a good way for me to come back. Yesterday was the anniversary of one of my battle, actually seven good friends that died in Iraq. So I had a very hard time yesterday, which is why I went to feed help feed yesterday about a whole patriotic call to be able to pass it forward to honor the fallen by serving the living by being able to enter those parks it's a good way to deal with depression and battle mental health and get with other veterans and go hiking and doing things like that mm -hmm. i see where you're going with that fishing is therapeutic i'm not good at it but just going out there just kind of eases uh, especially when you have anniversary dates coming up and or veterans day and or memorial day so I'm tracking, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Just a couple of things I, I would add, you know, to the general conversation. Is this the most pressing problem to the veterans community of Los Angeles? No. This is just our first recommendation because we've never done anything like this before. And I think we can learn a lot about what this process looks like before we can go sort of tackle the bigger issues facing the, the veterans community. Um, you know, the other the other thing I would say is that, you know, with respect to um, public lands, it's not just parks. You know, there's a lot of theaters like, for example, myself, you know, the Hollywood Bowl, most people don't realize is, you know, owned by the county. Now, does that mean I get to go see Rod Stewart for free at the Hollywood Bowl? No, because that's a leased event. However, you know, any county events taking place, you know, maybe they set aside some tickets um, for for the veteran community. And the last thing I would just add is that our duty is to advise and recommend. That's it. How this unfolds after it leaves our hands and goes to the board, um, you know, we we don't know. And so I think this is a great way to experiment with um, just making our recommendations and our presence be known to the board. And hopefully we learn from this process and and we can attack the bigger issues uh, for vet veterans in LA County. So do we have other discussion? If hearing none, do we want to entertain a motion to vote on the amended recommendation? Do I have a motion to vote on the amended recommendation. Mr. Dennis, I thought we did. Uh, I'm with Patricia. If she's going to go for voting for it, I, I say let's do that. Does that motion have a second? Well, I'll second the motion again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Carl. I appreciate. Uh, OK, uh, we so, have a, a motion before us to approve the. Um, to approve the recommendation with the amendments. So I guess we'll move to a, a roll call vote. Is that roll call vote. Stephanie, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Commissioner Anthony Allman. Affirmative. 
Kelly. Approved. Commissioner Jackson Kelly. Approved. Commissioner Cheezato. Commissioner Zato. Commissioner Gutierrez. Commissioner Dennis Anderson. Approve. Hey, this is good chair. I lost audio for a second. Approve. Commissioner Chizato. So the commissioner. I, I believe he's absent at this point. Yeah, we're a little over time. So that that was just five yes votes. So that's. Or do we require the unanimous to affect the vote? Stephanie. But since he dropped off, there's no longer a quorum, so I. You know. OK, well, we'll um, let me try to see if he's. Available. Yeah, do you want to uh, you want me to just give a real quick brief and then uh, maybe uh, Commissioner Zito can uh, hop back on? Does that sound good? To the yeah, I think that's a good use of time. We have about 15 minutes left, so that's a good use of time. All right, so uh, good to see everybody. Uh, a lot of great work happening in the community. Um, as uh, Commissioner Leal mentioned, we had a really great uh, event here hosted by Vega. Commissioner Jackson Kelly was in, in attendance as well. Um, it was just, I mean, I, I got to be honest with the commission when I get this building full of veterans and people who care about veterans, it just, uh, it makes everything worth it. Um, I've never been a politician and this job requires a little bit of politics, but, uh, having the, uh, patriotic call full of veterans and family members and, and, uh, veterans serving veterans, it just, uh, it makes everything worth it. So just wanted to mention that, um, we did put together uh, a report, um, for my desk. That went out um, briefly go through that. So we're currently uh, Tuesday through Thursday, eight to four. Uh, and then first Thursday, uh, first and third Wednesday uh, is we're open till 8 p.m. Uh, working with DMH to get share cost to uh, supplement our budget so we can look to uh, extend our hours um, moving forward. Uh, we're currently working on a fee schedule uh, for renting out uh, Bob Hope Patriotic Call. It'll always be free for veterans and veteran serving organizations, but uh, other county employees that are not veterans and the public, uh, we're looking to create a fee schedule uh, specific to those two, which county county employees would have a discounted rate, um, and then the public would be uh, general general going rate. We've had a lot of uh, individuals and uh, organizations reach out, uh, some that don't serve veterans that want to rent the space. And so this is another way that we can recoup some of our costs and um, keep the building open more often. We currently have 12 uh, staff vacancies. We're actively interviewing for three and the remaining nine were in the exam process. Uh, we actually just got one of our lists for our VCA two. We have four vacancies there. Those are veteran claim assistants who do uh, active work um, that we just got the list today. There's 148 individuals on that list. So we're um, going to start interviewing as soon as possible. Uh, there was some mention of uh, the board motion um, with DHR. We've been working with them, uh, really just providing uh, content um, consultation and then uh, exploring partnerships necessary with uh, Department of Labor, P3, um, United States Army Reserve. Uh, International City and County Management Association and uh, the office, office of Assistant, Office of Deputy Assistant of the Secretary of Defense. Um, we've also flagged several legislative opportunities for the county uh, to pursue to expanding uh, eligibility to serve uh, OTH and uh, the active reserve component, as well as bringing additional resources to the county to serve more veterans, reservists, and their families. Uh, one bill in particular, um, I think it's 4611 House Resolution. That's uh, specific to uh, feds um, 
issuing grants to the state to give money to county VSOs to do uh, more work and conduct more outreach. So um, pretty excited about that one. The uh, board motion uh, number 12, we're looking at an MOU with uh, Department of Aging and Disability for a, a two-way referral um, a process between our two departments, um, looking at specifically adult protective services, um, which re resides in uh, aging and disability, as well as their food service uh, delivery program. Um, so as we're identifying veterans that are isolated at risk, we're currently uh, in an unsafe situation, uh, we would be able to get that information and deploy resources to help our um, aging vets that are at risk. We're also looking at a couple other agencies, Veterans Feeding Veterans up in um, SD5, I believe it is, as well as uh, uh, Dove Chaplin. Um, I think many, many people on the commission know him. We're also talking to him about possibly partnering with organization, their, both their organizations um, around the same kind of process as we're identifying aging veterans that uh, are at risk or isolated or um, don't have benefits. Uh, we're going to work on a screening to really kind of um, use to screen and uh, trigger a referral to MVA. We're, uh, we're looking at all that um, actively, as well as um, making uh, LA County a hidden hero um, county in support uh, in partnership with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation in support of our 122,000 caregivers here in the county um, and uh, engaging with the, the local VA and Vision 22 around a MOU specific with our department um, and the county to extend services out to uh, Antelope Valley and San Gabriel area, uh, Valley areas. Um, last agenda item uh, 16 from November 1st is Operation Greenlight. I'd like to personally thank um, my county colleagues uh, from the departments of public defender, beaches and harbor, public health, probation, human resources, public works, public library, and ISD. Um, and we're currently looking for funding opportunities for training for first responders regarding uh, military culture. But those departments that I listed, they all um, either lit their built some of their buildings up in green, um, and or did uh, veteran specific events either for their staff or for the community, um, or they helped. Um, really uh, ensure that uh, that day at LA was a success. Um, they had booths in the in Patriotic Hall um, as our visitors were coming in. Um, the SD town halls were, the department's gonna delay that. Um, that was a decision that I made to look more for February, March timeframes. Um, looking at uh, the processes and the coordination between our department and um, the VA currently, uh, there's some things that we need to to pan out prior um, to kicking that information out. We wanna make sure that it's a smooth and uh, seamless process for veterans that uh, need to get their toxic exposure screenings from VHA um, and also um, other elements of the PACT Act. So that's something that we're we're uh, we're gonna be delaying. One thing I'd like to ask the commission is please, we, we would absolutely love your help uh, as well as the board deputies uh, finding a location that best suits your soup district um, that'll be able to bring more the most veteran constituents and family member constituents to, um, as well as the right time of day. Um, I'm, you know, 24 hours, whenever you say it is the best time and date, we will prioritize that as a department. Um, and then once we have that nailed out, our department will work out the logistics, the flyer, and then, um, and then on the back end, we'd really appreciate help getting the word out to your respective communities uh, to get as much attendance as possible. Um, the town halls will consist of uh, representatives from VHA to talk through the toxic exposure screenings and other healthcare related um, nuances related to the PACT Act, followed by Veteran Benefits Administration talking to um, the benefits side of the PACT Act and the new um, regulations. And then the last part of the town hall would be myself engaging with um, the uh, participants around what they would like to see from our department and um, any kind of feedback that they have for me and our department. Um, so that's the uh, that's the background on the town halls. Um, of note, uh, Supervisor Barger will be holding an annual tribute to veterans event on May 27th. Uh, this is the one that uh, is held annually in Arcadia. So wanting to flag uh, that for everybody. Um, Supervisor Hahn was in attendance uh, as Pico Rivera Library uh, opened up their Veteran Resource Center, uh, which is available every Monday uh, for a VSO. Our VSO will be there uh, filing claims. 
I um, also like to recognize and thank Supervisor Keel for her work on behalf of veterans, specifically around housing and suicide. Uh, we certainly wish her well on her next steps and she will be missed. Uh, as Chairman mentioned, um, Board Chair Holly Mitchell attended Vet Day LA and reaffirmed her support for the veteran community, which our department really appreciated having her here. And then Supervisor Solis uh, hosted her second annual Veteran Day event at PFC Obergon Park. Obergon uh, is a Medal of Honor recipient and a Korean War veteran. Uh, Battleship Iowa will be hosting Fleet Week on May 23rd through 29th. And uh, this is one uh, a decision that we made as a department recently. We are going to have a uh, host a 50th anniversary of the pulling out of Vietnam. Uh, it will be a welcome home event. Um, we uh, want to honor our Vietnam veterans for their extreme sacrifices that no other generation of warfighters have had to go through. Um, we intend to pay tribute to their collective motto of never again, a pact they made to ensure that no future generation will ever have to endure what they did. Um, so we're very excited about that. We're going to start planning um, that piece and uh, welcome any feedback from the commission on that. Um, we're also in the process of standing up a working group specific to transitioning service members to support the board's latest directive specific to SkillBridge uh, and the ETS uh, sponsorship program. We currently receive data from CalVet, which is obtained directly from DOD around all transitioning service members with a home or record listed in LA County. In October, we had 285 service members come back to LA County to make it their home after service if they came back to their home or record. Uh, 243 had honorable discharges, 11 had general under honorable discharges, 29 had other than honorable discharges, and two had bad conduct discharges. 10.9% will not be eligible for VA health care according to these numbers. Uh, current estimates for the county uh, are other than honorable or lower discharge um, is around 15%. So it looks like uh, just based on that one month, we're trending um, better. The uh, DOD is is uh, putting less uh, service members um, back into communities with uh, that are not eligible for VA health care. Uh, 47 were women, which is 16.5%, opposed to the current county veteran population, which is close to 10%. So more women are coming out of um, the military back to LA um, uh, here locally. How am I doing for time, Chair? Uh, Director, I think we have Commission Commissioner Zato back on. So okay. if we can I just wrap it, I'll wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah, then uh, just working with the uh, CEO Legislative Affairs, how policy works uh, with our department. Um, if there's policy that I see or somebody from my team sees, we flag CEO Legislative Affairs. And then uh, as the board gets ready to take action um, or as uh, we'll prepare the, the recommendation to the board together. And uh, that's how we move legislation. So that that is it for my report. Uh, thank you, Director Zinner. I, I'd ask that uh, Vice Chair Anderson uh, entertain the role of chair once again uh, regarding the uh, recommendation. Commissioner Zato, there has been uh, discussion uh, of the recommendation number one. The uh, discussion was uh, really to approve the amendments. Uh, I think you had something to do with them, so you're probably quite aware uh, which pronouns got replaced. Uh, but we are on the floor for a vote to uh, uh, approve the amendments uh, uh, to include uh, Chairman Allman's uh, recommendation that uh, you have the uh, county MVA uh, pass through for the ID that goes through the California Department of Motor Vehicles or, or for California ID as your uh, identification for access to the LA County facilities. That is what the uh, motion to approve was. And uh, if there, I we were in the midst of a roll vote. Uh, can we resume that or do we need to do it again? It can be resumed. We, it can be resumed, okay. I think we had uh, a roll call that involved five of the six uh, commissioners, so it awaits your 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 vote, uh, Commissioner Zato. Hey, Commissioner, yeah, uh, I vote to approve. 
It sounds like the motion has carried and I defer happily to Chairman Allman. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Chair. And I think we'll uh, we'll hold Commissioner Jackson Kelly as our parliamentarian. Uh, she seems to be pretty, pretty comfortable with the, the Roberts rules of order. So uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll make that an official capacity with an amendment to the bylaws next month. Um, <laughs> So it looks much, like that's a unanimous vote to to approve our first recommendation. That's uh, I think that's progress. I'm uh, I'm excited about it. Um, moving on to the next uh, agenda item because we only have about three minutes. This is a uh, an overview of the topics that we have agendized for future meetings um, to include um, Commissioner Liao's comment regarding the pathway to citizenship. I had mentioned the previous meeting an issue regarding uh, veteran discount for pet registration. We have Commissioner Gutierrez's uh, uh, introduction that was made to the Women's Department of Labor Women's Bureau. Thank you, Commissioner, for doing that. Uh, cross commission cooperation from Commissioner Zato, as well as uh, station naming regarding LA Metro. Um, I have a couple things I would like to add, but I just want to throw it out there to the commissioners. Uh, if there's any items for future agendas, I should say it's probably not going to be next month. It is December. It is close to the holiday. We are required to have a meeting, but I believe that uh, we'll just focus on the department's strategic plan and pick up new business early um, next year. In which case, I I will no longer be chair of the commission. Uh, according to the bylaws, we'll have a new chair. So that's that's pretty exciting. You don't. You don't have to hear from me anymore. <laughs> so if there are no other topics or ideas for future meetings, I just want to add that I think we should get a briefing um, from the LA Community College District regarding um, student veteran homelessness. I don't think it's talked about enough. The LA Times has reported, you know, that uh, one in five Community college students are homeless. That's one in 10 in the Cal State system. It's one in 20 in the UC system. Uh, LA Times did some coverage in which they featured a homeless student veteran. And um, I think we should start a dialogue with the community college system about what can be done for student veterans that are experiencing homelessness. That's a great idea. I got I got I got one for you, Chairman, when you're ready. Yeah, go for it. You know, I, I hear we're going to confirm, but there's been a lot of activity or there's been changes within the SSVF program. Uh, they expanded how much a veteran can make to eligibility, and I believe that they're also going to expand it to um, not only is it going to be the cost, but it's going to expand that veterans may be able to receive like phones and stuff like that through SSVF. Yeah. And I also heard was that the VA is expanding their Uber, uh, their medical Uber uh, for veterans that need to go to their appointments. So I'm curious about that. I think it's going to be under their peer. Uh, again, this is secondhand information, but I'm curious to see. Um, if West LA is going to expand that Uber program, which is great for veterans that need to get to and from their medical. Uh, and then the other one I would like to hear from is IHSS. Uh, basically, it's a county program. There's a lot of veterans that don't qualify for in care support services from the VA because of their percentages or just the system itself is just hard to to get into. Uh, it wasn't always like that. there's been more denials than you can imagine, but a lot of times we refer to LA County for that program, but it'd be really nice to find out about the benefits of that for seniors that are experiencing that they need assistance because seniors are being impacted greatly and they need uh, assistance, if you will, for that, uh, somebody to come care for them because they're to that point where they're by themselves or their loved one. I get a lot of phone calls regarding that, but mm. I send you an email and kind of let you know what a lot of the issues are going on from senior issues 
uh, like you mentioned, students, um, you know, being homeless and accessing and needing services. So, but that's pretty much what I got. Those are some ideas. I'm sure I have other ones, but that's pretty much what I wanted to convey to you. Okay. And uh, if you could make any introductions to Stephanie Guerrero to help sort of pinpoint who who the POCs would be for each of those departments. I just want to add one more thing as well. Um, earlier this month, the LA County, LA County Homeless Initiative released its funding recommendations. And in particular, um, with regard to benefits advocacy, there was a reduction of, I think, about $480,000, um, not specific to veterans, but for benefits advocacy across the board, of which veterans is a subcomponent. Um, I think we should talk to the homeless initiatives. My understanding is that there is there's appropriate offsets, so we're not going to see um, a reduction in, in, in service to the veteran community. But I think it should be discussed in the context of the loss of briefing. What we heard is that there's a 6.1% decrease in the LA continuum of care. The data for LA County does not show a decrease. Um, it actually shows a 1% increase. And so my concern with regard to how that is being presented to the public is that people think that veterans homelessness is dropping. And that's going to affect investment decisions at the local level. And I, I think as commissioners, we just need to pinpoint that, you know, that might be true for LA County <clears throat> continuum of care. That's not true for the county. Um, and, and we should be making sure that the investments are being made necessary to serve homeless veterans. So um, long story short, homeless initiatives, um, I think we should talk to them about their benefits advocacy strategy. And that's all I got on that. Any other items? I know we're three minutes over. Okay, hearing none. Go to the order. Next, next agenda item. I just ask that we make it brief. All commissioners, if, if we can just get this wrapped up, but I'm, I'm happy to say just for other members of the public who might be dropping off. Commissioner Liao, go ahead. My apologies. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I really, I really don't have much for the sake of time. Okay. Just, you know, uh, very busy in SD1. I would imagine all of you have been to several events. Uh, November definitely keeps us very busy. Uh, there are a lot of events that were just done. If you didn't attend yesterday's Bob Paul Patriotic Hall, it was definitely well worth it. A lot of thank yous. It was very nice to see uh, the director, uh, Miss Stephanie Stone. It was also nice to see other members of MBA, uh, Mr. John Guterres, uh, and and uh, just all the movers and that you know are out there kicking butt and taking names. It was so nice to see them all. It felt great. It felt like the perfect place to be. That being said, uh, there are a lot of other things going on. I know under Supervisor Solis, and I'd imagine other supervisors, this is a time where turkeys are being given out. There's a lot of contingencies to feed those in need. So I'm going to be involved as heavily as I can to ensure that I can volunteer and help where the need is. Uh, and I'm sure every other commissioner on here is doing the same thing. That's pretty much what I got. Very active. I guess that's the moral of the story as chairman is that as many events from Welcome Home Vietnam Veteran events that actually took place this month to all the events on Veterans Day, from LA all the way down to Claremont Pomona, we were there. We were everywhere what we could be. It's kind of very interesting how it is that we can be at two, three places at once. I guess that's a veteran trait and we're superheroes to some degree, but we were there. So that's pretty much what I got back to you, Chairman. It's like Santa Claus. All right, thank you, Commissioner Lee. I appreciate it. Commissioner Jackson Kelly, floor is yours. Uh, yes, uh, I attended, I also attended the fellowship our Veterans Day program. They did a special screening on Causeway, and I was very pleased to know that it was focused around uh, women veteran and uh, the CEO from Foundation for Women Warrior, Jody Grenier, was on the panel. 
I also attended um, Marino Valley College. I was the speaker for their Veterans Day program, and I've never seen such reception, warm reception as a speaker. Uh, they are really on the move as far as their Veterans Program is concerned. It's been defunct for some time, and so they are reviving it. Um, I also attended the Board of Supervisor meeting, the one that they did the special concession for veterans, and that was discussed before. I served on the committee for the for the event that was done at Patriotic Hall yesterday, and it was really um, grateful to see uh, our hard work come into fruition. They are great, uh, Sterling and Togo a great uh, couple. I attended the um, uh, Omar for the veterans, uh, the screening at the opera, I attended that as well. And uh, the mayor's luncheon uh, for veterans, uh, I attended that as well. And that's about it. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner McFadden, did you join by chance? She is in Africa. Okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll move into my good of the order. Um, I woke up this morning to some pretty interesting uh, news with regard to uh, a new federal lawsuit at VA or regarding VA West Los Angeles. The LA Times reported on it this morning, uh, as well as KCRW and NPR Morning Edition. Um, I would just recommend that uh, anyone who's in front of a computer either you know, Google uh, VA West LA, LA Times, you'll probably see the article pop up. There, there's likely more reporting on it uh, throughout the day, even as we were in this commission meeting. So I, I look forward to learning more about, about, that, uh, about that lawsuit. The other thing I would just add is, um, you know, I appreciate everyone's support with regard to the recommendation. I'm, I'm excited by what we're accomplishing here at the commission, and I hope we continue to do good work. That's all I got. I don't know if Commissioner Zato still on. Okay, Commissioner Gutierrez. Um, yeah, just following up, uh, like uh, Commissioner Leal mentioned, and uh, Commissioner Kelly mentioned. Um, the event yesterday was really, really, really nice event. We haven't been in person since 2019, so the Better Advocacy Group did an amazing job as always. Um, it was nice to see everybody out at that event. Um, coming in December for uh, SD5 uh, at Pasadena City College, there's going to be a Veteran and Family Appreciation Day. I sent the uh, flyer over to Stephanie, so hopefully she can uh, push that out to everybody. Uh, but it, it, it's it's at his Pasadena City College. You're gonna have uh, food. Food is gonna be provided. I mean, it, it's gonna. It looks like it's gonna turn out to be a really good event. So please join us there. Thank you. Thank you, and Commissioner Anderson. Yes, uh, I'll try to be brief, but there's uh, quite a bit. Uh, Supervisor Catherine Barger will be the honoree of Homes for Families uh, early next year uh, for their. Builders Ball, which uh, uh, qualifies uh, veterans for affordable housing. And we have a large development in Palmdale of 56 homes, and a similar amount will soon be approved in North Hollywood. Um, we had the Secretary of the California Department of Veterans, Dr. Vito Ambaziani, appear at our Veterans Military Ball, which was uh, packed with the uh, 300 uh, people in their uh, fine finery and their dress whites and blues. Um, and the secretary, I had no idea, but Dr. Mbaziani was the uh, Army Medical Corps officer uh, at the scene of the Pennsylvania National Guard taking a hit from a Scud missile in 1991, which was the principal high mass casualty uh, event of of uh, Operation Desert Storm. But apart from that, he shared a great deal about what the uh, department can do for housing access, education uh, access, and uh, other benefits offered the, the veterans' homes. 
So that was Secretary Ambassiani at the Veterans Military Ball. And we had a spectacular showing of the Antelope Valley's uh, Mobile Vietnam Veterans Memorial with all 58,000 names of the fallen from Vietnam. Uh, it uh, attracted thousands of visitors over the course of five days. So everything went well. That's mine. Okay. That, I believe, brings us to the uh, end of good of the order, and the next item should be adjournment, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. We're uh, a little over time, but we had some technical difficulties, and, and uh, yeah, I appreciate everyone hanging in there with us. Like I said, next meeting will be hopefully um, concise, brief, and to the point um, with regard to the department's strategic plan. And we'll be sending out information through the departmental newsletter. So if you're not on it, email info at mba.lacounty.gov. And with that, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Appreciate it.